the ground. Um, you never want to be flat on your back, right? Never want to be flat on your back. Worst case scenario, I want to have, be able to have my hips up so I have movement and mobility, right? Really to get into a position where I can start to escape and, and defend and escape is I want to be on a side where I'm getting chest to chest pressure, right? Because they're going to be pressuring down with the chest. So I want to have my strongest against their strongest, build my frames, active feet so that I'm pushing in and I have the ability now to move and shrimp if I can, right? So if you're having a lot of problems where you're getting pinned and you can't get out, I guarantee you it's because you're here. You're here, you're trying to push and bench press someone off of you, um, unless you've, you know, you're the bigger person that's gonna be tough to do. So we're always gonna try to get into this type of position before we escape. What allows me to do is I can get my elbow in and I can rock up and post, or I can always bring my elbow out and sit up into it, okay? So if, if you guys have taken class with me before, I always say when you're pinning someone, the elbow that's on the dominant side you're on, I call that the magic elbow. So if Aaron come here, comes here for a second. So Aaron just prevents me from getting my elbow on the floor, right? Just, I can't get that elbow on the floor, it's really hard for me to post, right? As soon as I get that elbow on the floor, now I can move. Okay, so it's very important when you're going to start your escapes, when you're turning in chest to chest, you have to have control of that elbow so that you can use it as a post. If not, it's tough, right? Someone just has to put their hand underneath your elbow and stop you from being able to put weight into it, and you're gonna be on the ground all day, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. So, um, I'm gonna talk about, uh, we'll start with half guard, right? Like full half guard, traditional half guard. I personally don't like it. Um, some people play. I don't like it because we're kind of in a 50-50 position on the bottom. Um, they're kind of right on my hip line, and unless I'm the stronger person on the bottom, I'm relying on my arms to do all the work, right? My legs are preventing them from kind of moving, but they have gravity, right? And if they're bigger, stronger, um, they'll push me down and they'll keep me locked down. So I want to talk about kind of the worst case position here. So he gets me in a full lockdown, he's got the underhook, and he has the cross face, right? And I thought, oh good, I'm locking down this leg. Well, he's got the clear advantage of what's going on here, right, shoulder pressure. So what I'm gonna do, number one thing I have to do is I have to try to get, as I said, onto this side. I have to take this pressure off my face because if he's giving me shoulder pressure, my head's going this way, it's really hard for me to turn and have chest, chest pressure. So the first thing I do, my fingers, I come right inside over the calf of the shoulder and I drive this down, okay? So now I start cutting the angle. So you can already see I'm starting to pull to get my shoulder off the ground and getting chest to chest pressure. This arm, I lock it down tight at my hip and I put pressure into my head. So now when he wants to move one of his arms, I have him locked in, right? I'm not like this where I give him free reign to take that arm out. I'm going to be like, no, I'm going to control the position now, okay? So from here, I have him locked in, he's going to struggle. I want him to think about what's going on with his arms. This leg, I'm going to unlock. The foot that's hooking on the inside, I always turn my toes to the ground. My toes are up, he can slide that leg out. Now I'm screwed, okay? So I always want to have that trap there so it's down. So as he's struggling, this leg, I'm gonna cross over like an X. I'm gonna wipe his knee. So now his foot's over. Now, look where his body's moving. I've shifted his hips over in this direction. Now when he tries to put weight into me, you're not gonna get it, okay? This is important. Now I can push on his hip, drive my knee out, get guard, and then I can start my attack, okay? So this is going from the worst possible place you can be in a half guard um, to getting in back and retaining your guard. So let me turn around this way. We'll change the angle. So Aaron has me locked down. First thing I need to do is I need to get that shoulder pressure off and kind of turn and hip in. And that's just when I can let go and I can use this leg and I still keep this foot the trap. And I lock his arm down. X, wipe it. Right, I can actually feel that I'm carrying some of his weight. Not push. Come in. 
and then you can start playing your tax however you want to go. Does that make sense? All right. I'm not clapping today, I'm not saying bad words. Just do it. Go. I, I don't think you should really, with the modern jiu-jitsu game, which is kind of funny coming out of my mouth, um, <laughs> use a traditional half guard, right? There's not a lot of attacks you do from there. It's kind of like traditional side control. Like I have to release my locking mechanism in order to move. So I don't have a whole lot of mobility and I allow my opponent to have, or my training partner to have a lot of weight on it, right? So it kind of sucks. It's good if you have to default to it. Right? I know people try to do the lockdown and all that stuff, but there's kind of easy ways to get out of that. So the game's developed where you don't want to, don't want to be in that position, but I want this leg wipe hook in wiping position because I use it a lot from, uh, playing, you know, my kind of version of half guard was actually knee shield. So, what I like to do when I play is I get inside. Once again, I think the important part here is the foot that's on the inside. My toes come to the ground so that it's a hook. And it's naturally going to force my knee to the ground, okay, if you're going to have it inside. You can play outside as well, but I just want to talk about right now, I have it trapped inside. Um, and so, he's going to sit back on it. All right, so he's got that leg trapped but I want to make sure that he doesn't get that free, right? So if he wants to de-weight, he wants to kick out, I want to make sure I have the best option I can in order to stop that foot from coming. I bring my shield up. Now, depending on how big they are, sometimes my foot's on the hip, sometimes it's up higher, but I always curl my toes in. I don't want it to be loose, because those of you that like to play leg locks, if I have a loose ankle here, you're probably going to try to go and rip it off. So I want to keep it tight so I'm able to push and pull. Okay, this arm, I reinforce it in the knee, I'm at the shoulder, and I'm grabbing the wrist. Okay, and this is one time where I will use straight arms because I want him as far away from me as possible. Okay, one thing you're gonna learn with half guard, there's two safe places to be. Your head way out here, or your head way inside here. Anywhere in between, I have a broken spine. I'm gonna be curved. And if they pin me in that position, it can cause a lot of problems. So I want to either to be here so I can frame and use it against him, or I want to be way out here where he can't get me, right? He can't grab a hold of my gi, he can't grab a hold of my head, he can't hit me, he can't do anything. So I'm going to be in this position. And I'm gonna let him now push weight into me, and I'm bearing weight. So when this happens and they start bearing weight and I'm able to control this, I kick my leg out and I come up with a high grip, okay? You can come in low, but I like to come in high here. I'm going to do that same X switch and catch that foot. One of two things are gonna happen here. He's gonna try to hug into me, which now I'm gonna wrestle him to the ground and I'm gonna climb, okay? In the mountain side, whatever it is, however you can get there, okay? Two more time. So we're here, once again, I'm controlling this foot with mine. I can push and pull him. Okay, it's not just being lazy. I'm actually trying to control and hook, and I can actually pull this foot in, and I'm here, push, pull. I'm gonna kick out, come up. I'm going to X, get that leg, okay? I can, if he's bearing down, I can start wrestling and get him. Now, see how he's here and he's kind of pressing me back down? I'm gonna reach back and I'm gonna grab his foot, which is gonna launch him forward, and I'm gonna come underneath. I'm gonna hold on to this foot. Oh. And I'm in the back. Okay, so he's either, I'm either gonna be in a position where I can push him back by simply grabbing his ankle and his knee and driving with the head, or if he's starting to pressure me back to the ground, because I don't wanna go back. I've done all this work to get here. I don't wanna get back down here. Right, because now I've lost that shield. Now he's on top of me. This is a bad spot to be, right? You can manage it, but I don't want to be there. So I'm here, I'm going to come up. I'm going to X. If I find that he's starting to push me down, I'm going to grab that foot. I'm going to launch him forward. In this case, he came here. I'm able to sneak out and come behind. Okay, does that make sense? So one of the two, ankle and knee, drive through him, wrestling like a single leg, or if he's pressuring me down, I feel like I'm going to collapse, reach back, grab that foot, and drive him forward. 
Okay? Let's give it a try. So remember, this foot, I keep my toes down so that I can actually pull and push his leg. Right? Pull and push. Test their base and their stability. Shin up, foot hooks in. Right? So I can push and pull. Push and pull, push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. Walk, walk. Okay? I'm going to kick through. Come up high, tight. Right? I'm getting tight. I can start ripping them here, get them off base. Even if he pulls, I X my feet and get that rotation. Okay. If he's starting to back away, I'm just going to come with him. Knee tap, take him down. I still have that foot. He's not getting away. If he starts to put pressure into me, I'm going to pop through. And I can put him back. Here. Okay? So it's going to be the reaction. I'm going to get up here. I'm pretty safe, right? There's no submissions you can go and get on. If he pressures down, he wants to go that direction, I'm gonna let him go that direction. If he wants to back away, I'm gonna pop. So it all comes back to like my first class, I taught pigeon. This ability to get into this position is very versatile in jiu-jitsu. So you have to find ways to use it. But I'm not gonna force it, I'm gonna be here. If he wants to break it down, Boom, I'll pop. If he wants to go that way, I'll go there. If he just wants to hang out here all day and talk, I'm fine. I can do that, okay? But I'm not gonna force it. It's gonna be off their reaction. And they will, they're gonna press into you, you can press back and you'll feel when it's the right time to go, okay? And if some of you are having difficulty, you should remember you're on the bottom. You did, you did it purposely on the bottom or you did it on your own bottom. You're giving them the advantage of, of gravity and strength. So it's not gonna be easy, okay? But you build this frame, it's going to be nice and strong. The one thing I want you to watch out for is don't get lured into like here. Okay? Because look what happens. I can push straight out. As I turn, I can't push that way. Now this clears. He's so close to me. Now he's going to get here and I'm going to have to play what I was doing before. Okay? I'm going to have to bail out. So I stay here. I stay as far away as I can from him. And when I play sometimes in nogi because I don't have to worry about him grabbing, I'll just come back here. So he's looking down the line, the sight of the rifle, and I, I'll play here. If they get too aggressive, and I still have this foot. Okay, right? those of you that like it, I can blast them. Get my hooks and I can pull. Right? So that middle ground in half guard, knee shield, Z guard, whatever you want, that's the danger zone. Okay? That's where they can get arm's length, they can reach, they can grab, they can pull you in. That changes the entire game. Okay? From that position. So someone asked, what happens if, you know, I'm here, right? I kind of mess up, I shoot in, and before I can get that, I, I get smashed back down. So I haven't changed it, that's fine. Now I start lowering my hook down to the waist. I still stay close to the chest, right? I don't want my head sitting out here where they're gonna cross face me, right? They're gonna start trying to choke me. Um, they're gonna be looking for that underhook. To set that up, right, or overhook, whatever. They're gonna be playing with this position and now I can get in trouble. So I come down and I lock that elbow in, okay? And I will bring my hand up on the bicep to protect. So I'm here, right? I'm always gonna protect this and frame it. And I'm in close. If I have to, I'll bump him. I'll come in low, hook, drive, and take a moment. Okay, so I still have it. You can do this takedown without the hook, but the hook is so much better because I control that base, right? He can't get away from me now. And it's real easy for me to scurry, to climb the ladder, and get on top of it. Okay, so one more time from this angle. So I'm here, I'm doing everything right. I sit up, he, he smashes me back down. I'm gonna come in low on the hip, hook right in, find his hip bone lock. Don't let them have the ability to push you back. Get that hook. Now I can drive, knee tap, and I can come up and drive through. Okay, right here. And I get myself in a really nice position where I'm smothering. Okay, so we're gonna use the same position. I'm gonna go from high, to the shoulder, to the hip. 
my head stays in close, I'm defending, right? You can put your hand out here, he can push this back. When you put reinforce in your head, he's got to move your whole body. Okay, this is a lot stronger, takes a lot less effort and energy, especially if you're the older, slower, weaker, tired out, smaller person on the bottom. This can wear you out. This is really easy. Okay, then same thing. Get that leg position and then drive into them. Make sense? All right, let's give this one a try and then I want to move on to side control. All right? Don't worry about the wizard. I'm going to show you why. This whole foot, this whole weave thing changes the position of the wizard, okay? From being a lot of pressure on. So, Aaron. So, we get in this position, he starts to get that wizard lock on me, okay? I pop this. And I always keep my elbow tight, right? Like, I'm not going to come out here and try to make a, a big motion from my shoulder. I pinch my elbow, so I'm controlling that wrist, and I come in. And I often try to grab his hand if I can. Right? And I'll do like a really fucking cool John Wick. You do the bullshit stuff to come in and get it. Okay? I'm not going to limp arm here. I'm limp arming here. I'm pinching with the elbow. So if you've done Pritz, classes, right? It's always pinching with the elbow. I want to pinch that elbow and I'm going to move here. When I start doing this, I'm not strong here, right? The further your elbow gets away from the hip, the weaker you are, right? So I don't want to do that. And changing that angle will pop him enough to open it up, that fraction that you need to get out, okay? But remember, if you're on the bottom, you get in a position, someone gets a wizard, remember, you fucked up, something has happened. If something bad happens, okay, it's predictable. But this gives you an option. And when I'm here and I've left too much space and he puts the wizard on, I pinch, right? I often just come right inside and then lock this. And now I can push out. And then it's pretty easy to just pull out. I already have my hook in and I can start sliding out. Okay? So make sense, because I know a lot of you guys had a question about the wizard. You guys want to try that for a minute? Can you show yeah. it one more time? From which direction? From here? Right. Oh yeah, because it wasn't on this side. Okay, right, so we're here. I haven't done my wipe yet. I'm coming up, I've left way too much space. And he locks it and he drives me down. Number one thing, I have to block that so that he's not getting connection with his hands and getting more pressure. Okay, I'm gonna pinch my elbow tight and wipe. That allows me to get out a little bit more. I keep my elbow tight. I just point back and I come in. Because at this point, here, try to move your arm. I'm keeping it, right? I'm not allowing him to have motion until my arm's in a pretty much safe space. Once I can kind of straighten it out and start turning it in, like to suck my thumb, it's gone, right? So I try to come in and catch it if I can, so that I'm playing with his grips, right? Hot stove, he's like, I'm not going back in there. Okay, but I don't want to get in a position where I'm here and now I'm trying to do this big limp arm motion. Yeah, and now he comes over, he switches out, he's packing the bag, and he starts choking the shit out of me or breaking my arms. Okay, so I'm going to be very methodical about it because I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I'm doing this. Oh shit, I made a mistake. Pinch my arm in tight, get the white out, in. Okay, now it's safe. Then I can break it out. I can do whatever I want, right? Pack the feet, go to the back, okay? But don't, like, you say limp arm, thinking like we can just be like this big noodle, you can't, okay? Pinch it, straighten it out, bring it in, okay? He's not gonna, he's not gonna back out at that point. If he backs out to try to arm bar you, that's good, he's taking weight off, you just pull your arm back in, okay? But if I start rotating too much and too much motion, chances are something bad's gonna happen, okay? Does that make sense? All right, give it a try. From here is using that outside leg to come inside and hook and get that hip direction and trap that leg, okay? That's gonna kill their mobility. Now when they wanna move, they're moving away from you, right? So the chest-to-chest -chest pressure's off, right? They may get back to it, 
Um, they may have some trick to get out of it, but at least gives you an opportunity to start working um, to get up, off that ground and get into good position for attack. Uh, so let's talk about side control, which is what I was originally going to do, but as I said, there were some other course classes here already. So I just want to add a few things to it. So you have a few more, uh, few more options to what Eric and Kirk have shared with you. So same thing, Aaron gets this tight traditional side control. Once again, we're, we're, we're in chest to chest here. He drives that shoulder in, he starts driving me away, right? There's not a lot of ways for me to escape going this way. I need to get back into him chest to chest. The first thing I need to address is that shoulder pressure. So once again, this arm comes in, I pinch here. I'm gonna get my feet activated and I just have to bridge a little bit. But notice what I do is I'm popping my head out. This helps me change the angle of the hold down, right? I'm no longer perpendicular to him. I'm now going chest to chest. And I like to shoot my hip up onto his leg and drive my knee into his hip and my elbow. I don't necessarily have to have my elbow all the way through at this point, but I want my elbow in there that I'm starting to form a frame and I still pinch this arm. I feel comfortable now, right? I feel very comfortable now. Now, Eric showed, you know, you can trap, roll him over this way, right? If he pushes too much into me, I can roll him over this way. Okay, but that's gonna be like a major, major overreaction by him, which once you get someone who's skilled in rolling, they're not gonna do that, okay? They're gonna flatten out, they're gonna base out because they know they're kind of in a, in a position of trouble, right? But I have those options to go, you know, over or here, okay? You have those options. And it's always good to pressure test it to see if maybe they haven't locked it down tight enough and you can hit that base and get it. But once you get locked down, and I'm here, so pinch, clot, boom, drive into him. And I kind of push my head away. Once again, my head goes to the floor. I want to put as much pressure on his hand so that he can't pull it out. And I'm blocking here at the elbow so it's not easy for him to get that arm out. So he locks it in, tries to get his arms out. Right, he can get him, let go. Like he'll get them out, but it's gonna take time, right? It's not like I'm here and he rips it out and then now I'm eating elbows and forearms. I wanna give myself that split second so I'm here, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set up what I call the pain frame. Go figure, I might have a move called back. <laughs> I'm gonna take my fist from here. Once again, I'm not releasing my elbow. I'm keeping it here and I can put my fist right through his chin and I'm gonna drive through. I want his chin turning that way. And I come around the neck and I grab the cup of the shoulder. This hand's gonna stay where it is. I'm gonna lock him down. Okay, so see how his arm's starting to straighten out? I'm causing a lot of room here. And if he tries to press in against me, it's very painful, okay? Now, I can go into kind of a standard position. I can drop my elbow straight down. I like to try to push his base out a little bit when my hand comes to the waist. Shrimp out, drive my knee in. I can start right away going for attacks or I can go to get right? Depending on what you want to do or how they react to you. But I'm gonna open up a lot of things here that you can't get away from. Okay. So we're here. He's got me locked down. I need to get that shoulder pressure off before I do anything, right? Because that's what's gonna stop me from being able to escape. So I pull it, lock this in here. I try to like shoot myself out, right? Kind of like a baby bridge position I'm here. And I like to come up on his leg so I have weight, so I can feel control of where he's going, okay? So we're gonna be really hard for him to do knee on belly when I'm sitting on his leg, right? If I'm lazy and I'm here, he slides on knee on belly. This is gonna be horrible active hips and I'm up. Keep this pinch at his elbow. Fist comes up, around, reinforce. Now I can drop my elbow in. I like to push his hip out to break his base, drive my knee. I can come in and I can start my attacks or I can pull full guard, whatever you like to do. Okay, let's do it from the crowd over here. Getting that shoulder pressure off, tripping in them at the feet, right? This might take a few you know, movements to get in there and lock it, pinch the elbow fist, 
This comes around towards his head, almost like I was trying to paper cut or choke him, like a no-gi one, but obviously I'm not gonna get it, and I lock in that shoulder. This is a pretty strong frame. Right now, once I come out, if he wants to disengage here, that's great, I push him out, and I have a really strong frame for me to start getting away, okay? But I still have this arm trap. In, push, drive that knee through. If I want to attack, right? I can attack this arm too on the other side if I wanted to, or establish my full guard. Okay, makes sense? But you need to make sure that when I come across, I'm turning his head away. It's coming around to turn his head away. So he wants to get that chest to chest pressure back. He's gonna be turning his head, he can't get it, right? I don't want him to look at me, right? Don't look into my eyes, look away, because it's gonna get really bad, okay? Have him looking away in this position. Jam, 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 jam. His only way to get relief from this is a disengage here, which if he does that, awesome. Get up, run away, okay? But don't, don't let them, don't put the frame up there and let them look at you. You have to get that head turning away so that when you're framing up and you're starting to move, they can't push back into you and get that chest to chest pressure. Make sense? All right, let's give it a try. So if you're having trouble with this, remember, active feet, active hips, right? You have to use those to help you move. And remember, if you're in like the worst like position you can be in side control, cross-lay shoulder pressure, right? You made a lot of mistakes to get there, right? A lot of mistakes to get there. So if you never get out or you end up getting cemented or mounted, right, probably deserve it. Okay? But this gives you an option of how you can apply a frame, right, to get that pressure off to allow you to start to move. So now I want to go and look at what Kirk taught, um, the ghost of people. That's the other way that we can go with this. So Aaron comes in, same kind of setup. I like going to this pain frame because it gives me, gives me lots of options. So I'm here, once again, I need to push and turn into him. I'm going to come up and I'm going to get the hand here. And there's a reason why I'm going to keep this hand here for this particular move. Okay, you bring that in, I'm going to come underneath. But when I come underneath, I still keep my leg there, right? I don't want to move it yet until I'm ready to go. And I'm going to do this slow. So as I shoot out, I pull my hand in. And I'm going to finish him right here. I'm going to be even lazier than Kurt. I'm just going to sit here and finish my head arm arm triangle right there. Okay? My, paint, my hand has to be on that side of his neck to get it. If not, it's just the escape through like Kirk showed. This gives you an option if I can get to that frame as I'm coming out, it gives me an option to cement right away. How awesome is that, right? You got me pinned down, I'm like halfway up and you're tapping, okay? So I'm here, I'm doing all the right things. I get here, yay, I get this frame in, I'm like, awesome. I can drive this in. As I come out, I push, hook, right here. Lock it, okay? I don't have to move from this position, roll it. I can keep turning, I can gator roll them here if I want to, but I want to be super lazy, right? If I want to switch up my choke, but I've got them, okay, when it's on that side. If I don't get it, I just continue to come out, right? But the opportunity's there to pull it in and get it. If you resist and he pops back up, then I'm gonna pop right up. A lot bigger than you can either, either option you're going to get your knee in or you're going to ghost and they just sprawl out and lay really heavy on you. Yeah. You can't get your knee in and you can't go under. Stop fighting bigger people. <laughs> <laughs> right. There, there, yeah, I, I, you've, there's not a perfect answer for everything. Like everyone tells you there's a perfect answer for everything in jiu-jitsu. They're not. They're full of shit. Right? When you're on the bottom like that in business, sometimes it just sucks yeah. and you're going to get crushed and you're going to get destroyed and you have to be smart on your defenses. If someone's just going to sprawl out on you, they're not going to give you anything and they're not much bigger. First thing you always have to do, active hips and feet. If you're flat on your back and you can't get your hips up to give you some type of mobility, you're never going to start the escape. Right? But I always say, I'm not trying to push the building off of me when it collapses. I'm trying to find a way to slide out. So you have to find ways to slide out 
that work for you. Yeah, okay. Just, yeah. Just yeah, because he's being a horrible training partner. He's got fucking four stripes now on the white belt, so he's like, I'm almost, I'm almost made it. I almost got that blue belt. I'm almost there. Okay. But it's good to pressure test that, right, and find out because it's going to happen, right? None of this is going to work perfectly every time. I'm just giving you some options of if you get set up the right opportunity. There's, there are ways out, and you can hit submissions on the way out as well. Okay. So I'll show up from this side here. So one more time on this one. And then we'll go with the hands on the other side. So from here, I'm coming underneath, I get my pain frame, slide in. I still keep this leg in, because once again, if this screws up and he starts pressuring me back down again, I want to make sure that I have my active hips so that I can bump. Right, and I may have to bump him to start getting out. Roll in, draw this in. If he's too big and I can't get it, then I'm just going to pull it in. My arm, there's no threat for my arm right now. None. So try it. Boom. Lock him in. Get the finish. Gator will. You have to line it up. Get your finish here. Or you can just go to side control from that position. Okay? Your arm is not at risk when it's there. So try it. If you don't get it, get out. Right? And you'll feel that when you're going like, oh, no. I get to get out of here. Does that make sense? So I'm going from the same position. When I bring this hand underneath, I'm keeping it here so I can still have the ability to bump and go. And then I'm gonna push it. Grab it in. Right, pull it down. That way I can pull this if I have to get out. And then I'm square up and we're good to go. Make sense? Right, let's try it. Once again, yeah. you don't get it, right? I think I like the gear. You, you keep moving on, right? It's just an option that there's a submission on the way out, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna go back now to what like Kirk was showing, where my arms on the other side. Okay. So this choke's not gonna work when it's over here. I need it here so that I can get that wrap on the head. So I'm gonna set everything up here. Okay, I get that position. Sometimes I like to bump and grab here so I can control that head, okay? As I shoot in underneath, I draw my elbow back and I lay heavy on his arm, okay? So I can elbow to elbow hook, so I'm here. So if I'm like, fuck, I'm super tired, I can't do anything anymore, I've got him here. He tries to get up, he's not. Now I can grab here, drive, Wipe him around, throw him in modified Keza, and break his arms. I had to do something to tie it all together, right? Okay? But I want you guys to get this elbow to elbow hook and the heavy pressure, because it's gonna prevent him from getting away and staying low to the ground. So if I wanna come into a headlock position, I can, or I can wipe him around and get him flat on his back. I'd rather tack him, get him flat on his back, than him going to a turtle position. Right? Because the turtle game is advancing, right? People are getting better at being defensive and it's hard to break it open and they can become offensive from that position. And I'd rather get them here where I have, how many do we do? Seven submissions, right? Okay. So watch what I do again. I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna give him a little bump. So I come under, he's thinking maybe we're going this way. So you're not cross facing on this one. I'm not cross, I'm just kind of giving him a little bump so I can start getting out. Cause I want to have the ability to hook this arm as if I was trying to get a high over hook on the way out. As I push out, I pull this back and I'm heavy, right? Heavy, heavy, heavy. Hook, pigeon, grab, elbow, up, weave him down. whatever you want to do, okay? And when this happens in a live roll fast, if he doesn't go with it, he's going to see a doctor, okay? So do this slow, okay? This puts a lot of pressure on the shoulder, okay, as I go around. Now, if they don't go, you can go to headlock position or whatever, but the thing that I want you to get is that hook and that heavy pressure when you're kind of sliding out so that they're not getting in the way. The worst thing you do is you get out and they get jerked right back on top of you. 
right? And you're like, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore, right? You know what jujitsu, I'm out of here, okay? So we'll do it one more time from this angle. So do it slow first and you get the connection. So in here, I get into my position. I like to give him a little bump so I can get out here. I want to make sure I'm high enough so that when I come, I can clamp that elbow back into place. I push out, elbow in, then I'm here, right? I can start digging right away for headlocks if I want, okay? If that's what you like to do. But if I want to get up and I want to get in a really good attacking position where I have, right here I've got one or two attacks and I'm not in the best position, right? I'm still kind of vulnerable depending on how big he is. I'm gonna hook so that I can pull. So I'm fully connected. Chest to chest the whole time, right? And then if you want then, you can right back in. If you want to do as a drill, like your partner. Do one, do one, do one. Yeah. You can get underneath, pulls it. Oh. And right around. Okay? Make sense? Can you see it again? As I turn my right hand's pulling on his other arm. I'm pulling his other shoulder, right? I want to take his I want to take his arms away from him. Right? So this one's gonna be out here, and this one I'm pulling in here. Oh. So it's here, so now he's got no base when he comes around. His elbows are gonna be up nice and high. He's gonna be flat on his back, right? And then I can take advantage of that and go for the attack. Make sense? Right, let's give that a try. And uh, that's gonna wrap it up once we're done here. Practice for a few minutes. So you're here, yeah, good. Okay, now, as you come out, pull that elbow through. Yes, come out, no, you're going Thank you for coming out. I know it's the last day of camp. Everyone see that batter. It's cold as a ice cooler in here today. Uh, but thanks for coming out. If you have any questions about what I've taught this week, obviously open mat today. Uh, contact me, you know, through Instagram, Facebook, uh, through Belt Checker app, whatever. Be more than happy to help you. And uh, hopefully, I see some of you later on this year at one of the other camps that I'm teaching at. So thank you. Let's get a quick picture.